GPU prices have been absolutely crashing lately, getting much closer to MSRP. We're still a little far off, but wait, something's distracting me. Let's talk about the sponsor. What's that in the shot there? That is a new microphone sent to me by the sponsor of today's video, Toner Mics. And honestly, when I opened up the package, I was shocked by what you get for this price. Looks like it's normally $78.99 on Amazon, but currently only $55. My normal microphone setup costs hundreds of dollars. And look at all that comes in this package, not just the microphone. You get the clamp to attach it to the desk, this extremely adjustable boom mic arm, and you get the pop screen filter, a windscreen filter to go over the mic, the a USB cord to attach to the computer, the shock mount, the microphone. And if you want to hear the microphone quality, that's what I'm shooting the video on. The, so you can judge it for yourself. Click the link in the description or my pinned comment to buy one today. As I was saying, the RTX 3060 came down in price from costing in the like $700 range for most of since its launch to where recently you can buy them for around $500. And I've actually now been seeing occasionally some deals into the mid 450 range. However, when I did a video talking about, hey, most people, uh, most people's wrong, but um, the most common graphics card out there is still a GTX 1060, which a lot of people would have skipped a generation and then upgraded to the RTX 3060 in a normal situation. A lot of people skipped that upgrade. And I did a video on, should you upgrade to the 3060 now that its price has come down? But a lot of the comments on that video were, well, the price is still too high. And we've got the next series of graphics cards coming out. I don't want to pay so much more than I paid for my my original 1060. Well, have you considered the RX 6600 from AMD? This graphics card is not as good as a 3060. And I did a whole video on that. I can probably link that up here somewhere where you could actually compare those two directly. But it doesn't cost the same as the 3060, despite the fact that they both have a $329 MSRP. And lately, I've been able to find on a regular basis RX 6600 cards for $370 or less, which yes, I know is still probably more than you paid for your 1060, unless you really got ripped off on your 1060. However, Currently, used prices on the 1060 are still extremely inflated compared to where they would be in a normal market. So if you take advantage of that and sell your 1060 now before it's too late and the price of everything crashes, you might actually be able to swap your 1060 for an RX 6600 for, you know, less than you would have paid for an RX 6600 in a normal market. And if you wait for prices to come down on the 6600, then, well, your value of your 1060 is going to be coming down as well, because as the actual mid-range cards from the current generation start to fill in at their actual MSRP prices, it's going to push down the value of the competitors in the used market. But how much better is the RX 6600 than a 1060? Is it even worth upgrading to? Well, let's take a look at the benchmarks. All right, first up, we're gonna look at Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I really like to use this game as a benchmark between GPUs because, first of all, it's still one of the most graphically demanding titles out there, but it also features a lot of stuff like FSR, which was added in the 1.5 update fairly recently, and it features DLSS for when we're testing GPUs that support that. It also features ray tracing support. So we're gonna be able to look at all of those features and compare them. Plus with this side-by-side -side benchmark, it's very easy to see both the visual quality and the frame rates and everything in the exact same scenes. Now what we're testing first is just, if you just try to max out the game and look at a like-for-like -like comparison, how did the GPUs do? Well, the 6600, isn't a locked 60 at ultra, we can see it's absolutely crushing the 1060. And I honestly don't recommend using either GPU at these settings. And most of my comparisons from here on out are not going to be like for like. You could just look up what percentage, you know, better the 6600 is. But what does that actually mean? Well, what I've done here is I'm actually targeting a similar frame rate between the two cards because that's another way of looking at it, is at the same frame rate, what sort of image quality can we deliver? The 6600 could actually play at high settings, even with some ray tracing. This is ray traced reflections, but I did have to tweak down to FSR ultra quality, 
whereas the 1060 is playing at the medium settings here. Now, to be honest, this is not how I'd recommend using the 6600. I was just kind of playing around a bit to see what I could do to kind of ma uh, match frame rate. And, you know, to me, the, the RT isn't really worth it here, but since this card features that, I figured I should at least show it once in this video. Also notice that the footage from the 6600 looks a bit darker and I think a bit more color depth to it here. I was playing around with using the H.265 encoder on the AMD card, since sometimes people are curious about the encoders. Now, H.265 can't be used for streaming, but it can be used for recording and playback. And it did actually come out looking a bit different than the NVIDIA footage and even um, other AMD footage when it's not their H.265 encoder. What I want to look at here, though, is the settings that you might want to use to attempt to target at least 60 FPS in this game. The 1060 actually just really couldn't do it. I went all the way down to low settings and we still weren't at 60 FPS, so then I kicked on FSR to ultra quality, which is going to lower, uh, lower the render resolution of the game, and then use AMD's FSR sharpening pass and upscaling pass to try to, you know, sharpen it and make it look closer to a native 1080p. Whereas on the RX 6600, if we just turn the settings down to high instead of ultra, which still look very good, we're able to get well over a 60 FPS average, especially when we're not in that initial bar scene of the benchmark, which is especially demanding. Overall, the RX 6600, even in these extremely demanding titles like Cyberpunk, if you're willing to just go down to high instead of ultra, you're able to absolutely play 60 FPS or better in any game that I have tested. Now what I wanted to look at, though, is 1440p. Now, neither of these cards would I recommend for 1440p, but you might already have a 1440p monitor. You might currently own a 1060. And as you can see, even playing at low and using FSR, you're barely getting a little better than 30 FPS experience. Whereas with the RX 6600, you can leave the settings at high and use FSR ultra quality, and now you're getting a really over 60 FPS experience. Not that it doesn't ever dip below 60, but remember, Cyberpunk's still a lot more demanding than a lot of the other games out there. Now, this is still maybe not the best way to go on the RX 6600. Some people are gonna prefer to play at a native 1440p rather than use upscaling techniques. Some people would rather keep the settings high and use upscaling. Other people would prefer a native image and turning settings down. And that's what we're going to look at in this next footage. So look at this very carefully. The footage on the left and the footage on the right now are both the RX 6600. We don't have the 1060 in this scene at all. This is for people who are considering this as a budget 1440p GPU. It can certainly play 1440p, but your choice is usually going to be, if you want 60-ish FPS, to either play more demanding titles at medium settings, or to play more demanding titles with FSR, or even RSR if you're in a game that doesn't support FSR. Now, hopefully, FSR 2.0 comes out soon and gets broad support, but we don't know if that will happen. I mean, we know it'll come out, but we don't know what that support will look like. So hopefully into the future, you could rely on some quality upscaling technology. But for now, at least, I think it's a bit of a toss up and a personal preference which way you'd want to go here. Overall, I think a card like the RX 30, uh, sorry, RTX 3060 is a better 1440p GPU. Ampere doesn't have as much fall off as you increase the resolution, but it also currently doesn't cost the same as an RX 6600, despite their similar MSRPs. Well, identical MSRPs, but what does MSRP mean? Anyway, now we're looking at Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, currently, we're looking at, again, a like-for-like -like comparison. What if we try to max out the game at 1080p? How do the two GPUs do? In this title, the RX 6600 is almost doubling the performance. It is able to play the game at 60 FPS, maxed out. Sure, there are scenes in the game where you will dip below 60, but your average will definitely be at least around 60 FPS. Whereas the 1060 can actually respectably play the game at maximum settings, 
if you're into that 30 FPS experience. But let's tweak it down to the hardware unboxed optimized settings. So if you're curious what these settings are, I got them from the hardware unboxed YouTube channel which did an excellent two-part series of videos when Dead Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, optimizing the settings in this game. There's a little compromise to visual quality, but it's not particularly noticeable. And as you can see here, both GPUs have significantly increased their performance. The RX 6600 is capable as a high refresh rate 1080p card if you're willing to tweak settings in games, which often looks a lot like the max settings. It's not too big of a compromise. Although the 1060 here still can't quite get to 60 FPS. Once again, we're going to look at what if you try to use them for 1440p. Again, not recommended necessarily, but as you can see, again, the RX 6600, if you're willing to tweak the settings, can often deliver at least 60 FPS, if not significantly more, which we're getting here, even in some pretty demanding titles, again, using the hardware uh, unboxed optimized settings. But in most games, and I test the 6600 in a lot of games, if you go down to high or sometimes down to medium at 1440p, I'm usually able to get a reasonable 60 FPS experience on this card really do compare prices when you're actually shopping though <laughs> to see if the 3060 is in a similar ballpark. Now, once again, we're looking at both the 6600 on the left and the right. So to be clear, the 1060 is not featured here. We're once again looking at the 1440p experience. This is also giving you an idea of the visual quality difference between the uh, hardware unboxed optimized settings and the Mac settings. It's really tough to find a huge glaring disadvantage to the image quality with the optimized settings. So what I'm really trying to say here is don't be afraid to turn down settings in games. It sucks to buy a new GPU and turn down the settings, but if it's all you can afford and you need a GPU right now, I mean, just really something to think about. Now uh, we're gonna do a quick look at Forza Horizon 5. And these are settings that I might actually play the game on. So notice that the 1060 is at medium, the RX 6600 is at ultra. Also, the footage I'm showing you here has smart access memory turned on, but most people upgrading from a 1060 probably don't have a CPU and motherboard combo that supports smart access memory, although you might. But um, the RX 6600 still performs very well in this game, even without smart access memory. And I will show you that here in just a second when we look at the 1440p footage because even, uh, even though you do get a large performance gain by enabling smart access memory, the game's still very playable without it. So here we're seeing the, them at 1440p, the 1060 still at the medium settings, it's playable, but certainly below 60 FPS. At 1440p Ultra, the 6600 can actually get 60 FPS or better in most scenes, even without smart access memory. So if you're on that platform uh, without uh, that availability, don't sweat it. Although it's nice to get a good boost when it's available, as we see on the far right here. Now, I wouldn't... We're, uh, like, this is a best case scenario. Smart access memory is in many games completely ineffectual and sometimes even a small decrease in performance. So I wouldn't worry too much about whether you have support when you're choosing this GPU. So after watching the benchmarks, I think one of the main things we've learned is, well, the RX 6600 is a massive upgrade from the 1060. Although we've also learned that as long as you're willing to play it less than 60 FPS, the 1060 really is still usable. So the question you need to ask yourself is, if you've been hanging on to the 1060 this long, is it worth hanging on a bit longer for the next generation? Maybe from AMD, you might like to get a 7600, or from Nvidia, maybe a 4060. However, there's a lot to think about there, because while currently GPU prices have been coming down, it's entirely possible that with the launch of the next generation of cards, we'll start to see scalpers buying them all up and inflating the prices again, especially if crypto that's mineable on GPUs makes any sort of a comeback and energy prices come down. And all of that is a question mark. And anybody who tells you it's anything other than a question mark, if they're like, GPU prices will stay down, or they're like, GPU prices absolutely will skyrocket with the next launch, well, they're just, 
not being honest with you or they're way too confident in their own predictions. We do not know for sure what will happen. It's possible prices will go back up. Also, we don't know what the MSRPs on those cards are going to be. It's very possible that MSRPs are never going to come down to back where they were when like the GTX 1060 came out. In fact, I really don't expect them to. So the other thing to keep in mind is the time value of buying a GPU upgrade now. Because when will the mid-range cards for the next series launch? We're expecting the next series of graphics cards to come at the end of this year, at the end of 2022. But it's entirely possible that we won't see the mid-range cards until into 2023. We don't know this for sure, but it is pretty standard for the enthusiast series of cards to come out first and then for them to take their time releasing the mid-range, although the length of time it takes to get the mid-range has varied. Could be a month or two, could be six months. We really don't know, right? So if you really want a GPU now, <laughs> there's some value in that. So, you know, is the RX 6600 going to give you the performance that you're looking for? I really think that if you're playing at 1080p, then you can get a great experience in most titles at the ultra settings, although I think playing at the high settings is the sweet spot for the card, and there's generally very little visual trade-off. I think we also saw that at playing at 1440p is perfectly doable, although you'll probably have to go down to the medium settings in the more graphically demanding titles, although there are still many games out there where you could play them at higher settings at 1440p, also using upscaling technology like FSR, currently at the 1.0, but with FSR 2.0 on the horizon, we hope to see wide adoption of that technology, and we hope that it'll be good quality. All signs point to yes, but we still don't know for sure. So that's still a bit of a question mark. If it was me, I'd actually be very tempted to sell my 1060 now while its price is still high, get most of the value out of that, and pick up an RX 6600 or an RTX 3060 if the prices came down far enough. But currently, the best prices I've seen as of today were an RTX 3060 that's hard to find for under $430, whereas I can find a RX 6600 pretty consistently for around $370. Now, $60 might be worth that upgrade to the RTX 3060 for you. Although, you know, if you're not that into ray tracing and you're playing at 1080p, I think the 6600 will get the job done. So it's, again, visit my RX 6600 versus 3060 video if you want more of my uh, thoughts on that and some more of, more of those benchmarks. So, like I said, if it was me, I'd probably try to get the used value out of the card now and upgrade to something that's more usable now. But if you keep waiting, I don't blame you either. I think it's really a personal preference thing and also depends on your financial situation and how much you value having a graphics card now versus later. I hope all of you have an excellent day.